What is the secret to getting maximum bokeh out of your Lumix G9 Mark II or any other Micro Four Thirds camera? Today we'll talk about the beauty of bokeh and just how much of a full frame look you can squeeze out of the smaller sensor. I've spent a lot of time in recent years shooting with the Lumix G9 and now the G9 Mark II and I am someone who really really likes to shoot wide open for creative effect. I love my bokeh. The biggest limitation of cameras with smaller sensors is they deliver more depth of field than is ideal at times. The problem is compounded by cheaper lenses that aren't fast lenses anyway. The question I'm exploring today is whether you can really capture images with rich bokeh and shallow depth of field that will compare against full frame cameras when you're shooting micro four thirds. And we're going to do that while exploring the tempers of Laos, the mountains of the Himalayas, plus a little of the Australian Alps. Back. Before I get into the specifics of how to push with Boca for your G9 Mark II, I want to begin by discussing why Boca is so important. For me, Boca is absolutely essential to enjoying the craft of photography and exploring creative compositions. The faster the lens, the shallower the depth of field, and the more potential to paint Boca into your compositions. If you're new to photography and keep hearing this expression, a fast lens, what this really means is a lens that has a very low f-stop, meaning it allows in a lot of light when shooting wide open. If I shoot a lens at f8, for example, the aperture inside the lens becomes quite small, a bit like if you poke the tip of a pencil through the shutter. When I step out to f2 on the same lens, that aperture blows wide open and lets a lot more light through. A fast lens will go down to f2, or maybe faster. It lets in more light and hence means you can shoot with a faster shutter speed. This is super handy when capturing images in low light. I need a ton less light to capture at f2, for example, than I do at f4. That means I don't have to push the ISO so hard on my camera, or I don't have to use the slow shutter anywhere near as much. And it's even more useful if your lens goes down to something like f1.4. In bad light, there can be significant advantages to a fast lens. But that's still not why I love fast lenses. Bokeh is why I love them. I get excited about photography when there's a bit of bokeh in play, when there's elements of the scene that go dreamy soft and the highlights balloon or go misty. I get excited about the creative potential that bokeh delivers. What you need to remember about bokeh is that it's not simply a soft effect. It's actually a powerful tool for composition and allowing you to control what stands out in a scene. There are times when sharpness is important for a viewer to explore all of a frame. Conventional landscape photography, for example. But there are many, many more situations where bokeh can help you guide the viewer to focus on what matters and guide them to your intention with the capture. Sometimes we use that soft focus to tone down the confusion of a scene, to allow more layers of information to be included, but without competing with our main hero. This is very important for the enjoyability of a photograph. The more that is happening within a scene, the more uncomfortable that can be to observe. I typically want my audiences to feel calm and relaxed with an image so they can rest with it and enjoy it. So I want their eyes to come to rest. I want my audience to feel satisfied. Having a main hero of a scene that is embraced by Boca, it's a good way to do this. My advice in this video isn't simply limited to the Lumix G9, of course. The same results with bokeh can be achieved with any Micro Four Thirds camera body. Indeed, you'll see images in this video that were captured on the little GX8 by Lumix, the GH6 by Lumix, and the original G9. The reason for this is because it's the lens that does all the work not the camera. The great strength of the Micro Four Thirds format has been the range and quality of lenses. Indeed, the format would have been a total failure if not for recent advances in lens technology that allow for such high quality optics. Things like embedding the lens correction information on the lens with a microchip, and the ability to manufacture high quality glass that delivers fine resolution to these very small sensors. 
the lens is doing most of the work. When it comes to bokeh, this is especially so. It's the lens that makes bokeh, not the sensor. For wildlife photography, the bokeh effect can be obvious, even at high f-stops such as 6.3. I have a couple of lovely telephoto lenses for bird photography on the G9, but my favorite is the 100 to 400 f4.5 6.3. At maximum extension, it's getting 400 millimeters at f6.3, which is the equivalent of an 800 millimeter on full frame. It's a very long lens, and that's part of the reason it delivers some lovely bokeh moments. When I'm out shooting birds, I see this most dramatically when there is separation between the bird and the rest of the scene. In situations where the subject is very close to leaves and branches in the shot, I'm not going to see much shallow depth of field because they're very close. But if you position yourself to shoot through leaves that are very close to you or very far back in the background, then the bokeh will really start to shine. The key here is that you, the photographer, have to do a little bit of work to get the best out of the lens. We'll talk a little bit more about that later and talk about techniques that focus on bokeh. But first, let's look at more conventional lenses instead of wildlife and birds. In full frame terms, the 50 millimeter and 24 millimeter perspectives are where 95% of my photography takes place. On the G9 Mark II, that means shooting with a 25 or 12 millimeter lens. Lumix were clever enough to make f1.4 primes that match these focal lengths. My journey with Micro Four Thirds started long before the G9 was released, and the modest GX8 was the first time I did any serious work with the format. I did a shoot in Laos back in 2016 using this camera, a pair of prime lenses, the 12mm and 25mm f1.4, the fast ones. I have published a lot of images from this camera in magazines over the years, including National Geographic Traveller in the USA and a UK magazine called Food and Travel. I cannot emphasize enough, despite the very small sensor on the G-Series Lumix camera bodies, simply working with a fast prime lens can transform these modest looking cameras into a professional grade solution that delivers on bokeh. For most of my career, it's been an easy choice for me when shopping for lenses. I typically purchase prime lenses that are very fast in preference to zoom lenses that are very convenient. I am dedicated to quality in my work and as a general rule, zoom lenses are a compromise on speed and quality. That is until Lumix release their 10 to 25 millimeter f1.7 zoom for micro four thirds. I first tested this lens on a trip in Nepal, traveling through locations that I have enjoyed for well over a decade. Every year when I run my tour to Nepal, I like to travel with a different camera or lens, so I experience the photography a little bit differently too. I'd already enjoyed the Himalayas with my G9 in previous years, but when the 10 to 25 came out, I was genuinely amazed at what this lens could do. Most zooms are built for convenience, but this one was built for quality. F1.7 is not the same as F1.4, of course. It's very close, just not quite the same. So there's a little bit of compromise involved. Also, this is a heavy lens compared to simply carrying two fast primes. It weighs much more than the Lumix 12 and 25 millimeter lenses combined. But it is a little bit wider at 10 millimeter instead of 12, and it's got the practical convenience of not having to change lenses. For video, this is especially powerful. I just need to stress though, that I never wanna put convenience before quality. And the good thing about this lens is I didn't have to. I was super impressed with the bokeh that this lens delivered. It has an impressive close focus distance too. So it proved a treat for shooting flowers and still life. Getting close to a subject is also one of the key ways that you as a photographer can extract the best from your bokeh. The closer you are to the subject, the more bokeh you get in the background. 
I wrote an article on this lens at the time describing it as the best lens you can take to Nepal. The thing is, I seriously wish there was something comparable to the 10 to 25 millimeter for my full frame gear, but there just isn't. There are zooms that'll cover that range, but not at f1.7. This lens, combined with the G9 or G9 Mark II, is something of a unicorn. As it turns out, Lumix made two unicorns instead of one. A few years later, they released the 25 to 50 f1.7, the sister lens to the 10 to 25 f1.7. Both these lenses are the same size, same weight, use the same filter thread diameter, and between them, they cover an impressive focal range without departing from the joy of f1.7. I took these two lenses on a tour through Outback Australia in 2022, shooting with the GH6. I use them for everything from star trails to landscapes to flowers to still life and portraits. The 25 to 50 millimeter was even better at getting up close to little things. It's not a macro lens, but it's pretty darn close and it delivers maximum punch of bokeh when you do get close. While the lenses are doing most of the work when it comes to bokeh, the fact remains that it's still up to you, the photographer, to extract the most out of each lens. This is true for bird photography with a 400mm or landscapes with a 12mm. If you want bokeh, you have to work a little harder. Not every scene will deliver the bokeh magic or even take advantage of the fast lens. And the wider your lens, the more work is required to push back on depth of field. When I first reviewed the G9 Mark II, I didn't want to fall into the trap of just treating it as a camera for birds. It's easy to go shoot some rens at 800 millimeters and show how lovely this gear is. I wanted to show that you can also walk around a city like Melbourne and capture some beautiful scenes that will rival anything on the full frame systems. And I wanted to show that bokeh was a part of that offering too. And I have to think about what kind of scenes are going to benefit from bokeh and which do not. Remember, it's not that every scene needs bokeh to be beautiful. That's just not the case at all. But there is a whole world of composition out there that you just can't tap into without that fast lens. What I mostly look for when capturing bokeh is depth in my scene. I want depth and I want layers. Bokeh is a powerful tool for composition that can emphasize that depth. Shooting through layers of flowers perhaps, or letting the streetscape drop out in the background when you've got something up close. It's up to the photographer to compose for depth when shooting wide open for bokeh. It's not about flat scenes, it's about what's near, what's far, and putting your subject in the middle of the two. Bokeh should be intentional, not an accident. When you make half a step towards bokeh, you might end up with something that just looks a little bit soft. You can end up with a scene that looks like you missed something or that you weren't paying attention. The power of shallow focus is directing the eye of the audience and making your intentions clear as the photographer. When I get bokeh right, it is absolutely clear what my intention is within that frame. For bonus points, I also like my photographs to have a few rough edges. And bokeh lets me do that with style. It lets me retain a handful of quirky and unpolished elements within my compositions by keeping them out of focus. Elements of a scene can be informative even if they're not in focus. When I'm working with bokeh, I also have an opportunity to shoot back into the sunlight much more easily because flaring on the lens looks so much softer when shooting wide open. Flaring can blend into the rest of the scene's bokeh as well, adding one more layer to my dance with light. Shooting back into the light is full of surprises when bokeh is in play. Sometimes that could be distant lights that balloon behind 
find a subject or misty flares that reach across a landscape. Or maybe just the unexpected ways in which that incident light bounces off other elements coming through the scene. Those moments when the light does something unexpected through the lens, those are my favourite moments with the camera. And all of this is possible with a modest little camera like the G9 Mark II or any other Micro Four Thirds camera for that matter. Yes, you are gonna get better bokeh from a full frame camera. No, you don't have to give up on bokeh just because you're shooting on a Micro Four Thirds system. Even if you put images side by side from a G9 and a full frame, you may struggle to see the difference without a trained eye. But how often do you find yourself having to mix and match images across totally different camera systems anyway? The question I get asked most of the time is, what is the difference between the depth of field I'm getting on a micro four thirds and the depth of field I'm getting on a full frame camera? And the difference is simply how hard you have to work to get the look you want. When you're shooting at f1.4 on a full frame, it is still less depth of field than 1.4 on a micro four thirds, just as f1.4 on a medium format is less depth of field than on a full frame. Size matters here. But the difference for you in terms of your creative potential is just with a full frame, you have to work a little less harder and you can push it a little further down the road. But it doesn't mean you can't get where you want to get when you're shooting micro four thirds. The key is you gotta have that fast lens and you gotta think about how close you can bring either your foreground detail or your subject to maximize the bokeh. If you loved some of the images presented in this video, then you too might love shooting bokeh with your Lumix G9 Mark II and a few well-chosen fast lenses. Thank you for joining me all the way through this video and I hope you feel inspired to get busy with bokeh yourself. Please drop me a comment below if there's something here you found especially useful or if there's anything you think I could dig deeper into next time. I have another video on this channel which goes into detail with the Lumix G9 Mark II custom settings and how to get control of them. Plus, there's a lot of other conversations about the art of photography and techniques if you're looking for more inspiration. Please have a little look around and have a great day.